15 minutes here for the journey. Sure. Um, welcome. Welcome to Washington. It's great to have you guys here. Uh, we've finished two weeks of practice and uh, things are definitely uh, moving at a fast pace. The tempo of our practices have been uh, just where the coaches want them right now. And it's just fun to be able to be back at the gym with the whole team and um, working through our philosophies together as, as a unit every day. It's been really, really positive on the court, and um, there hasn't been a day where we've had to coach an ounce of effort. So it's been fun. I've been having a lot of fun this year. Huge. I mean, like 180 degrees. I think last year uh, we were the players were all on pins and needles and a little um, apprehensive about you know, such a dramatic change in a, in a system. And uh, with that came a lack of confidence. And then when you couple all that together with nearly zero experience on the floor, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy at all. So this year, just the confidence alone, you know, and uh, the motivation is there. Um, it stemmed from the way we finished last year. And uh, it's, we had a fantastic spring. A really good spring um, and so it's kind of pushed us into the fall you know being a, a more collective unit yeah, yeah. as of yesterday we had 11 yeah, it's been, it's been really good. I think the players have done a nice job of taking care of their bodies. Obviously, we can't control some of those knick-knack injuries or major injuries, if you, if you will. You know, hopefully knock on wood. Um, you know, we'll, we'll remain healthy. But, you know, a lot of things are out of our control. The only thing that our players can do every day is that they take care of their bodies the best that they can, right? But there's things that happen that um, sometimes you can't control. And, um, but we're not focusing on things we can't control. We've been really dialed in and focusing on things we can't control every day. You can't coach height. You have a six four player. Length. Yeah, certainly brings length. Um, I mean, she is a freshman, so uh, you know. Um, but she's uh, learning every day. You know, playing a lot faster than she's ever had to play. Um, you know, and and obviously, uh, being a freshman. Um, you know, you're not necessarily always playing on instincts because you're thinking a lot and, and trying to learn and where are you supposed to go and your role and all that kind of stuff goes into play. And um, But she's doing a great job for us. There's been a lot of successful losses coming in the back end of that club. Uh, is it the club programs there that gets a little more maturity for their age? Yeah, I mean, just international basketball in general is um, advanced. And... Um, and uh, their development, you know, and um, they have some fantastic rules for young people to develop their game. And let me get on my soapbox for a second because I have two daughters that are growing up through youth basketball. And if, if America learned to have implement some of these youth rules that some of these other countries have, I think the development of skill set would be far greater um, uh, with, with our players, not to say it's not because we dominate in, in, uh, international basketball, American basketball is very advanced, but, um, you know, just the, the, the development of a total basketball player versus, um, a set position internationally, they do a really nice job of, uh, not allowing zone defenses until maybe eighth grade. And so you can develop not only your uh, defensive ability, but then you can develop as an offensive player too, and you um, aren't facing a double team in a 2-3 zone every time you touch the ball, right? And, um, there's just a lot, you know, so anyways, that's my soapbox. But um, I will say that, uh, you know, international basketball is predicated on a lot of ball movement and spacing, and that's certainly something that we love to coach. I'm never going to tell her not to shoot a, sh a good shot, you know, ever. Uh, we want all our players to be able to shoot good shots. Um, Amber um, shouldered a lot of load last year. 
um, and a lot of it came from um, her own work ethic and her confidence, right? Um, she believed she was going to make every shot she took, and I we still want her to believe that. Um, it's different this year because she's got a target on her back now. People know who she is, and uh, so we really talk a lot about scoring when the ball isn't in her hands and how she can find ways and, and under, learning the game, having a, having a um, higher IQ where she can put herself in position uh, to not only make herself better but to make her teammates better. And it's a job of her teammates to be able to knock down shots and score when, when she distributes it. So, you know, a great player makes those around her better, and she wants to be great, so she's up for the challenge. Well, I think, I think everybody's ready, to be honest with you. I think we've all grown um, individually as far as our skill set from one season to, to, to now in fall, as well as our confidence. Um, Missy Peterson is probably our most improved player from one year to the next. Last year, as a freshman, she um, – was in and out of practice due to her injuries and didn't finish the year uh, due to another injury. And, and so she just kind of really didn't have any summer, any fall for us. So it was just kind of, she was kind of thrown into the fire for a few games last year. Um, she had um, an unbelievable spring uh, that led into uh, some high confidence right now. Alexis Grigsby is another kid that, uh, you know, last year at this time probably couldn't make it through a practice. And now this year she's one of our leaders in, um, and her heart and hustle every day. So certainly having uh, those two uh, sophomores bring um, confidence to the floor because I think they were our least confident players last year uh, certainly has helped us. And and then you have, you know, Jenna who, um, you know, started, she was the only player in our program last year that started every single game. And, and you know, just she's playing with a calming effect and, and, and she understands she went from <laughs> – Probably, I wouldn't say never, but playing very, very little and just kind of thrown into it last year, as all of them. Um, but as a as a former walk on, it's a different uh, mentality maybe to our starting guard all year long. And so certainly, um, having her as a backcourt mate with Amber is certainly uh, um, exciting to know that you know she's back you know for them with them together. And you know, and then our freshmen are doing an outstanding job. They really, really are. I think. You know, Haley Van Dyke comes to us as a California State leading scorer. She's just, she just has a knack for scoring. And uh, she can shoot the three. She's strong. And, uh, you know, she jumps really well. She can finish at the rim. And T.T. Watkins is just all over the place. She leads our team in deflections and steals every single practice. Coach, what do you think about the Yeah, I mean, we've always kind of done that. You know, when we've had control of our schedule uh, over the years that, um, you know, we're not afraid to play people, you know. And I just think if you, if you don't play them, you can't beat them. And, um, you know, as a coach, I'm not really interested in padding my own stats. I would just want to get out there and compete against the best and, you know, develop um, Washington women's basketball back to national prominence. And in order to do so, you got to – you got to compete and, and win some of those games, right? And, you know, people could laugh and say you're not ready and whatnot, but, um, you know, as a coach, we like the challenge. We, we like to be challenged, and, and uh, it's fun to um, fun for our players to play against uh, teams that they see on TV regularly or uh, players that they might have competed against in, in – uh, club basketball through the years or whatnot. So, you know, I, I just am a big believer in um, um, in order for us to build the program that we want to build and, and get back to uh, being one of the top 25 programs in the country year in and year out, we got to compete against those guys. Do you think the people need to I don't know if relearn is the right word because they were on the, they didn't play through, they didn't have that experience playing through all those wins. Um, they saw it, um, but we put them in position in practice to 
we compete every day in practice. And so they're winning drills. They're winning um, scrimmages or controlled scrimmages or situational things that we do every day in practice. And so uh, we put a strong emphasis on winning in practice every single day, competing um, against each other and against our male practice players. So hopefully that will uh, translate to, you know, when the lights are on, winning an actual game. exactly what Amber says and Jenna as she reiterated all right I mean 16 games last year we won three quarters you know and then we got obliterated in one of the one of the four quarters right and and being able to put four quarters together you know um is and not have such a dramatic drift a uh, dip um from one quarter to the next is certainly something uh we work on um in developing our consistency without through practices and also, um, like Hannah said, is, um, you know, staying together through adversity and because um, it's going to come, you know, there's it's not utopia. There's going to be adversity and and being able to, um, you know, to compete to our best abilities, you know, uh, individually. Yes, but collectively more so. Certainly the way we finished the year with seven bodies on uh, active members, it was tough. Um, you know, it's, that's not our system, you know, and, and we like, we like um, to be able to play 10, if not more, if we had them. And so finishing with seven was hard, uh, certainly in games, but also in practices. And, and having to really adjust the last month and a half of how we practice was tough. Um, you know, so having the depth is, is something that, uh, you know, brings a lot of, um, you know, positive energy to the court. You know, um, I, I do think that everybody's a little bit better. I think that's the case across the country in every team. And it's just how much better are we? No, we want we want people to compete every day in practice for that spot. And uh, you know, we're not going to recruit people and tell them they're not going to play until they're a junior. It's just not us, you know. And so, um, but nothing's given; it's earned every day. And they know that the returners know that, and the freshmen are learning that right now. And uh, if it's a set lineup, it's because that what was what was earned. And if it's not, it's because that was what was earned. And uh, as a coaching staff, we don't get hung up on who starts a game. We care about who finishes games, and we uh, make sure that the players all know that as well. So, you know, uh, honestly, some of it has to do with matchups. Some of it has to do with game before. Some of it has to do with. Um, our practice intensity and our, our practice uh, consistency um, or performance, if you will, and some of it has to do with injury. So it all plays a role, and, and uh, you know, we want our practices competitive, and we want people that maybe don't start to be able to know that they have an opportunity to if they earn it. Absolutely. How could it not, right? It, there's so much fever going on in women's basketball within our city. I, I mentioned to our coaching staff, I went to a lot of more, more WNBA games this summer than I've been in a really long time. And, um, the, you know, I noticed it early on in their, in their year when um, they were playing, that might have been the Mystics, early on in the season – and uh, they really weren't pressing, and then all of a sudden they came, they put, they came back, and obviously Natasha Howard did so much for that for that team, and just added another dimension, right, to that to that lineup, and it was just so fun to go watch games and to see the energy and the intensity that they play with, and, and passing is contagious, and seeing Sue Bird um, lift up the players that are around her. It's, it's just fun. It's fun to watch. And I, I just had a great time. And uh, our players love going to the games as many as they can come to go to. And uh, I know that they're, you know, they're friends with some of the girls. And so it, it just makes it um, uh, a really special experience to have not only a WNBA 
franchise in your backyard, but, you know, the world champions and some of the very best players to have ever played the game. And you learn from them. You learn from the coaching staff. You watch intently about what goes on. And, and you know, I'm a, I'm a, I love the four quarters. So I love strategy and all that kind of stuff. And it's just fun to watch. And I was ignited. And Sammy Whitcomb, I mean, I was, I was going ballistic about how well she played and, and her, she played her role to perfection. And it's just – it's fun to uh, to to be able to share the city with them, and in our building right here in Alaska Airlines Arena. Yeah, so it's going to be great. Oregon, they were picked to win it, and uh, they won it last year. So I would have to agree with everybody. All right, thanks, guys. We'll have a little bit of time for you guys.